Hello, welcome to the repair specialist and in this video I shall be stripping down this carburettor, cleaning it and rebuilding it. And I shall be doing so in a slightly different way to the usual. I shan't be using accessories such as airline, carburettor spray, ultrasonic cleaners and drills for removing Welsh plugs. And I shall be showing you how to do this because I'm aware that not everybody has access to these types of accessories. Now I'm not saying the way I'm going to show you is better than using these accessories. I'm simply saying that if you don't have access to these then there is still a way of cleaning your carburettor and servicing it. But if you do have all these tools and accessories at your disposal then by all means please use them. And this carburettor is a non-genuine type carburettor that fits a small Honda moped type motorcycle. And as you can see this is a relatively new carburettor so it won't be so dirty inside. But in the past I have used the methods I'm going to show you to clean quite dirty carburettors. Okay, at this point then, when the carburettor's off the machine, I'd have a good visual check. Are the linkages working? Are they moving? There's the throttle. And I'd have a look inside there. I'd open up the butterfly there, the throttle butterfly, and have a look down inside in the Venturi to see if anything was obstructing that I could see visibly. And then I'd turn the carburettor around and have a look on the other side, or the choke side. Is the choke lever working okay? Is it free? And have a look down inside there. The butterfly's okay and I can't see any obstructions from this side. And also have a, I'd have a look here at these holes to make sure there's nothing obstructing them that I could see visibly. And then I'd continue to look around the rest of the carburettor on the outside. Is there any visible cracks or anything obvious, any obvious damage there? And so if I was happy with all of that, I'd now start the strip down. So I'd take a Phillips screwdriver and remove the two screws at the bottom of the carburettor here that hold the float bowl on. And so now the float bowl's removed we can see the components in there, the float and the jet and other things etc. And a good thing to do at this point is to remove the o-ring here, this is the seal that stops the leakage of the fuel out of the float bowl, and take a good look at it. Is it in a good state of repair? Is there any tears or cracks or is there any flattened parts on there that would suggest it won't seal properly? So we know whether or not it needs replacing upon rebuild. And so at this point have another good look inside the float chamber, is everything okay, anything untoward you can visit? Visibly see and then we slide this pin out here putting it somewhere safe and that then allows us to remove the float we just lift it up like that but what comes with it if we take a look underneath that's attached to it is the needle valve so we must be aware of that and so instead of it dropping off and losing it we need to be able to just gently slide it off and so when we've got the needle valve off that'll give us the opportunity to have a good look at the needle valve itself what we need to be looking at here, we've got a rubber part at the top. This is the sealing part that seals the fuel. If we take a good look at the end there, you can see that the surface of it is nice and flat and constant. There's no ridges or tears or anything like that. So we can use this one again, but if there is any signs of physical damage, that will need to be replaced. And just while we have the needle valve in our hands, we can turn it round and have a look at the other side of it. This looks okay. The frame there that attaches it to the float looks well and there's no damage. And the next thing to do is to take a look at the float itself and make sure there's no damage there where the needle valve sits, no cracks, no bends, etc. Take a look at the structure and then we look here at the float part. This should be sealed because it is a float, of course. And if you wanted to be thorough, you could just get a bowl of water, simply like this, and then place the float inside of it and then try and submerge it to see if there's any bubbles rising. And that would indicate there was any leaks in there, any cracks, etc. This is fine. Generally, though, you don't need to go this far because you can find evidence of fluid inside the float if it's leaking. You can just shake it and hear it. And so now we can move back to the carb body and have a look inside there, making sure everything's OK. And what I would do at this stage now is have a look at the top of the jet. Is there anything obstructing it? Now, the top of the jet here needs to be screwed out. But this is made of brass. We have to make sure we get a flat screwdriver that's almost the width or the same width as it so that we don't damage it in any way. And then we screw it out counterclockwise. And when we've removed this little brass part of the main jet, what we need to do is have a good look at it. We need to have a look through the centre. It should be a hole just like that. We can probably see better now with a torch. That's it. It should look nice and clear like that with no obstructions. But if you do find you don't have a clear hole like this, then no problem, because we'll be going through how to clear it soon. 
And so now we've removed the little brass screw part, we can look down into the main jet itself. It just sits in there in the centre and nothing else really holds it in. And so we need to remove this to clean it. So we'll turn the carburetor upside down and that should just fall out. If not, we give it a tap on the bench and it should come out. But this is what is generally referred to as the main jet. And as you can see, this is made of brass as well and there's many fuel holes in there and they all have to be nice and clear, just like this is. And again, if yours isn't clear like this and it is obstructed, I shall be going through very shortly on how to clear it. And so back to the carb body and the next thing I'd remove is this adjustment screw here and we just need a flat screwdriver and then just screw that out counterclockwise and remove it completely. And we'll need to remove this screw here to get access to more fuel holes and to do that we'll need to remove this screw here which operates the throttle. As we can see there we've got the throttle lever and that screw sets the idling speed for the throttle. So what we'll need to do now if we just remove this screw And now we can get access to this screw here that will allow us to clean the fuel holes underneath it. So we'll need a Phillips screwdriver and again counterclockwise and we'll remove this screw. And very shortly we'll be looking down this hole here and now we're going to clean it. Next we'll turn the carburetor right round to the other side and there's another adjustment screw just here. And we're going to get the flat screwdriver again and remove this, take it right out, again counterclockwise. And we'll take a quick look at this fuel adjustment screw here to make sure there's no bends in it or any damage and that looks absolutely fine. And so from there on then, the next thing I'd like to do is remove the Welsh plug so I can clean behind it. Generally when people service carburettors, even at a service repair centre, the removal of these Welsh plugs and cleaning behind them is often missed and that's to a detriment. I personally believe that if you're going to strip a carburettor down and take the time to do so and buy a service kit for it, then these should always be removed and cleaned behind them. I've often found gum and buildup of crud underneath these where everything else looked absolutely clear. I've had people come to me saying I can't get this carburetor going, I've given it a service, I've cleaned it, a new kit, I can't get it going and I've always said have you cleaned behind the Welsh plugs and the answer has always been no and when they've done so generally the carburetor will run okay. The only unfortunate thing is in order to remove them you have to damage them and the way I remove them without using a drill is to use a self-tapping screw and I shall use this one to remove mine. We just simply place the screw onto the Welsh plug like that and tap the top of the screw with an hammer. And we do so just enough to sink the head of the screw there, just a couple of millimetres, into the actual Welsh plug itself. And from there we take the Phillips screwdriver and continue to screw the screw into the Welsh plug. And as the screw continues to screw through the soft metal, you'll soon find that it will touch the carb body behind it. And as it touches the carb body, it starts to lift off the Welsh plug itself and thus removing it. And if we take a closer look at the end there, we can see the screw sticking through the core plug and how far it went in order for it to push it off its seat. And another benefit of removing the plugs like this is the minimal damage there next to the fuel holes, unlike using a drill sometimes, which can actually damage, physically damage the body, as a result of the drill passing through the Welsh plug and touching the carb body. Okay, so now I want to make sure that all is clear and clean where the main jet was, so I'll shine a flashlight through the Venturi and I can see it's all nice and clear. So, okay then, now we've got this far and we've stripped everything down that we need to, we can have another visual check just around the carburetor. We can look into the fuel holes and just to see if we can see anything again, look down into other areas, all the holes basically, and just have a good look around to see if there's anything untoward. There's also fuel holes inside here, which we will be seeing a little closer in a moment when we clean. Basically, at this point, it's about double checking what we've already looked at before we start the next phase of cleaning and rebuilding. And remember, we've got the parts here from the main jet. And so now we can start the cleaning process. And the way I do that is I take a wire brush and a pair of pliers. And I don't use the wire brush in the regular way, of course. What I actually do is I take the pair of pliers and I pull out a nice long wire brush bristle. And then I use this, but first of all, I try and straighten it out as much as I possibly can. So now I take the straightened bristle and I poke it through the fuel holes and make sure they are completely clean. 
Personally, I spend some time here just making sure that I've cleaned it as well as I possibly can. And doing this diligently for each of the fuel holes will reap the benefits later. And so if I'm satisfied here, I move on next to the other fuel mixture screw hole here. And so I do that exactly the same as I did. And if we turn the carburetor around, you can see where it comes out here just before the butterfly there on the throttle. And the fact that it's passed right through here means that it's clear, so great. And so moving on, the next place I would clean is here where we took the Phillips screw out and give that a real good diligent cleaning. And if we just tilt the light and have a look down there, we can see that there's a brass insert down inside there. I normally leave this in and clean very diligently inside of it because these are a little more difficult to remove in my experience and I've never really had any adverse effects by doing it this way. And so moving on, we turn the carburetor right round here. We can now concentrate on this fuel adjustment screw hole here. But as you'll see, this is a larger hole and if we turn it upside down and place some light in the Venturi again, we can see the wire brush bristle coming out just there. And so being able to see the bristle and moving it in and out like that gives us some certainty that that's nice and clear. In fact, if we take a look here at the fuel holes that are behind the Welsh plug again, and place the wire brush bristles in each of these three, we'll soon see that when we look down the actual Venturi, down the inlet of the carburetor, we'll see the wire brush bristle coming out into the inlet there. So each of these three should have the holes nice and clear so you can see the wire brush through into the center. And then we can be sure again that these are nicely cleaned. And as I've said before, it's always best to be very diligent about cleaning these holes because it will pay off big later. In fact, just to be thorough and make sure that everything is nice and clean, we can shine the light again down the Venturi and open the throttle. And when we do so, as we can just see there, we can see the light coming through nicely. They are perfectly clean. And of course, we can use the torch to check other fuel holes that they're nice and clear. So if we shine through the bottom there where the main jet goes, we can see that's nice and clear where that mixture screw goes. And that's because there's a constant through road if you like a fuel way that goes from the top there right through to the bottom and so now i'm definite that that's nice and clear as well and that means i can move on now to these two holes here at the front of the inlet so i'll get my wire brush bristle again and i shall be diligent in cleaning these two so there's the first one the one with the brass making sure that's nice and clean and then we can move on to the other one here and do a really good job of that too as I mentioned earlier, if you have an airline and carburetor spray at your disposal, it's situations like this where you'd use them. And so we'd clean inside the fuel way there, the brass part, where the needle valve sits, in pretty much the same way. But I can see if it's clear in a different way. The brass inlet there is connected to that brass part there on the top. And so I blow through to see if it sounds nice and clear, which this one does. And then there's the float bowl vent hole here. So I'll make sure that's nice and clean with my bristle. And so when I'm happy that all the fuel holes are nice and clean and that the carburetor is in a good state of repair, I would now fit the new Welch plug. And so I've just placed the correct size one in there from the kit. Now I'm aware that some people place these in with Ilamar, glue, studlock, all those sorts of things, but I don't. And the reason I've never used those sorts of things is because this plug is made of a soft metal. And in being so, it means that when this plug is correctly press fitted, the soft metal presses into the metal of the carb body, creating a good seal. But the way it's commonly fitted is by use of a punch like this. And we simply take the nose of the punch, put it onto the Welch plug and hit with an hammer. And because this is such a small Welch plug and the metal is so soft, I only need to hit this once and not too hard at that. Okay, so now we have the Welch plug in place, we now need to deal with the main jet. Making sure that it's nice and clean, and if it's not, then we can deal with it in the same way with the wire brush bristle. And when we're happy it's nice and clean and in a good state, we're going to refit it. So what we need to do, we can see on both sides here, we've got an open side there, that's, and, and then there's a side there that's more flattened. So it goes in with the flattened side facing upwards. Just like that and it just needs to be dropped in like this it doesn't need pushing in or pressing in and next to go in is the brass insert screw and making sure we're happy with its cleanliness we can then 
place it on the top and gently screw it in remembering this is a soft metal and so it would be easy to damage the threads and then of course we take our flat screwdriver and we screw it in and we do it relatively tight but not too tight and this is all we need that's going to push down on that main jet that we put in before it it'll seat it in just how it should be okay so when we're happy with the main jet and that it's fitted okay we now need to concentrate on the float and it's fitted with the metal at the top and when it's put in place from this bird's eye view you can see that the bottom of the cutout edges towards the right but we can't just fit it yet because we don't have the needle valve in place and at the same time we can't just take the needle valve and place that in on its own either and that's because they need to go in together and so the correct way to fit it is that the eye there on top of the needle valve is slid over this metal part here and then together they can now be put in place so we go over to the carburetor and we can place that in now so the needle valve is going inside its seat there and we can lower them both down together there we go and so now that's all nicely in place we can now take the pin that we slid out earlier and we can slide it back through there all the way through and out the other side and make it sort of equal each side there we go and as we can see that's moving up and down nicely and you can give it a little test as the float moves up and down you can see there that the the needle valve is moving up and down with it so that all looks fine down there and so the next thing we've got to do is place back on the float bowl and what's important though is to make sure we've got this o-ring fitted well there and make sure it's in place and also we've got the spill off there that needs to be fitted right in the corner on the right hand side at the top so that's the way it goes on there so if we gently put that in place making sure that the o-ring is in its groove and it isn't hanging out the side anywhere because when we tighten it up it will damage the o-ring and then it won't seal so just a good visual check there and once we're happy that all's okay there we can then put the screws back in and tighten them up and the next thing I'd install is this screw here and it's the one that was below the idling screw it's actually the one with the brass insert in we saw earlier so we place that in place and then tighten it up this one doesn't have to be in a specific position like an adjustment screw it's just got to be tightened right up to create a seal so now we screw it right up and there we go nice and tight and so the next thing I would fit now is the adjustment screw that fits in here and remember that was the brass one so we'll place that in now and we'll screw this in roughly to where it was when we screwed it out it's sometimes a good idea to count how many half turns or how many full turns it took to take it out so you can put it in the same amount uh, some people do some people don't but I put it in roughly where I found it and now for the throttle idling screw because we've placed that screw in we can now place this in make sure you do it that way around as otherwise we'll have to take this idling screw back out again and as before when we put the idling screw in we'll turn it in as many turns as approximately where we found it before we removed it And so as you can see now the more you screw it in the more it's moving the throttle mechanism across and it was kind of approximately where we found it so it's about there and so now we're happy that they're all fitted okay we can turn the carburetor around and there's one more fuel adjustment screw we've got to place back in but before we do we've got to remember that we took out a spring with this so we we'll place the spring back in first to make it easier and it's quite tricky but that's it we just place it in and then we can take the screw itself and we can place that in and then of course we'll screw it in with a flat screwdriver as many turns approximately as we took it out and at that that's all fully rebuilt and sorted hopefully now this carburetor when it goes back on the machine will work fantastically and I just want to add that this is the way I do carburettors and I've always been okay in the past never really had a big problem with them so if you want to do it this way that's clearly up to you but if you have benefited in some way by watching this video then please do subscribe and give me a thumbs up thank you so much for watching